Howdy folks, sorry I'm a little late today, but nonetheless I am here and it is day 8 of the 22 ways to auto <laughs> 22 ways to automate your freelance business. So, before we jump into it, if you're watching the replay, please feel free to jump into the conversation, leave a comment below and like, thumbs up, share definitely would appreciate it and I want to get as many people in here as possible how's it going Henrik long time how's everything doing um, so as you come in here I'd love to uh, hear where you're from why don't you drop it in what you where you're from and what you're up to today I'm just gonna make sure that everything is a go here and uh, make sure Facebook has this all going because I, I know some people have been having a little bit of a hard time getting notifications about it. I'm not sure really what that's all about, but I'll be honest, you keep changing things. It's the, that's the way Facebook is, I guess. <laughs> so, um, why don't we get started here, right? Don't be a flaky freelancer, right? It's the worst thing that you can do. And we've really talked a lot about building that foundation as a freelancer. We've talked about some ways in which you can automate, right? We've talked about email platforms. We've talked about crafting your UVP and being able to share that UVP in many different ways so that you start being able to be seen as that go-to person. So this is also a part of that in more of a sense of really optimizing, optimizing your business so that you can automate your business, right? You can't be a flaky freelancer, right? As a professional, nothing can fall through the cracks. Having a system in place that works for you not only reduces your anxiety, but it reduces the client's anxiety. I mean, that's the... That's the, that's the one thing that, I hate to say it, that freelancers have a stigma around, is that flaky freelancer, you know? I mean, companies don't want to work with flakes. You have to be organized. So, here's how you can do that. One, is figure out what each of your days looks like, right? And know what that is each and every day. So, for example, it's um, setting up your days in which your energy levels are most opportuned, right? So, in other words, let's say in the morning you're most productive, right? So, do all your high-value, high-intense tasks at that point, you know? Um, if you need some motivation during the day, have some low energy tasks, those tasks that are like five or 10 minutes, right? Make sure you plan each and every day so that you, you can hit the ground running each day with figuring, with doing what you need to do, not trying to figure out what you need to do and be reactive. All right. So I would love for you guys to leave a comment below if you plan out each day. The second thing that I'd encourage you to do is plan out your week in advance. One of the things that I have as a pretty much a ritual is my weekly review. I do it Sunday mornings. I basically take about an hour um, and plan out my week. Right? I look at my calendar. I look at my... Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but my cat's in the other room howling every time. I do these Facebook things 10 minutes out of the day and that's the time at which he decides that he needs to be vocalized. So, actually, if he does it one more time, I'm gonna bring him on the show and then he might stop forever. Scare him straight, right? Um, <clears throat> weekly review is to set up, for me anyway, knowing what Monday might entail, Tuesday might entail, I want to hit the ground running. I don't want to have that sense or that feeling that 
my week isn't going to be productive. So Monday for me is needs to be set up and planned accordingly. And I do that each and every week, every day of the week, right? Um, I basically review what my past week looked like. I take a look at what this upcoming week looks like. And then I start to chop up my days, right? So I know exactly what I need to do each and every day. Um, so that's the second thing is to have a weekly review, right? The first thing was to know what your energy levels are on that day. The third and final thing is no matter what it is that you are comfortable using, whether it's a calendar, whether it's a pen and paper, whether it's an app like OmniFocus or Todoist or something like that, have all of this information jotted down. Don't hold it into your head. One of the things that uh, causes the most anxiety is making sure that you know what you've done, right? You've gotten done what you've needed to get done. Um, and the thing is, here's a little psychology trick as well. As you work through your tasks and you check off these things, <clears throat> you can then, you get that little dopamine hit right because you see oh I've done this I've done that I've done the other and that's what I'm talking about in the first thing about your energy levels right let's say you wake up you're not feeling so hot and you really want to figure out that you know you know you have all this work to be done but you don't feel like it well start checking off some of those low energy tasks right the tasks that take five or ten minutes it could be simple things but you took you tick off one or two of them, then you start building that momentum, that psychology, that effect inside of your inside your brain allows you to, hey, I can go and now tackle on these other things because you've gotten into that groove, right? So I would encourage you to be able to be organized, right? You can you you own a business, you run a business. If you're not organized in any sort of sense, then that business runs you. You start to be reactionary for your clients. You're not active in your business. So definitely, you can't be that flaky freelancer and, and you have to make sure that you're organized in some way. So later, later on in the week, I'll be holding a, 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 an event, I guess, for lack of a better term, inside the Sustainable Freelancer Facebook group. It's a free group. You can go ahead and join up at res.com slash Facebook. And this will be around simple tracking that you can do for your content marketing. Look, I'm not a, con I'm not a writer. I'm not a marketer. Uh, but I know I need to do this stuff. So I've built a system for myself to know what's important and know whether or not it's working, right? When I put a blog post out there, is somebody listening? Well, this little system allows me to track that. And I'm gonna share that with you. So that'll be later on in the week. The only way you can get access to that is inside of the Sustainable Freelancer Group. So go ahead and join up if you're not already. And uh, that's all I've got for today. Tomorrow, um, I've got plans. Let me see, we have... <clears throat> Tomorrow, right. Tomorrow is a great, <laughs> great topic. It's about milestone happiness, and we'll share a little. I'll share a little bit more about that tomorrow. And if it's, it really needs to be. <laughs> I would encourage you, definitely, to be organized. Right. I can't stand. I'll be honest. I I wasn't really gonna get into this little bit of rant, but I'll do this quickly at the end. There wasn't anything worse to me that when I went to a potential sales call or sales meeting and the person on the other end of the table, so to speak, would say, within five minutes of meeting me, <clears throat> all right, so we just worked with another uh, freelancer and how do I know that you're not going to end up the same way, right? Like how, you know, they were kind of flaky, they were, you know unreliable, they didn't show up on time, they didn't meet deadlines. How do I know that you're not gonna be like that person? Five minutes in, hey, 
how you doing? I'm Jason, right? So that irked me so much. And that's what being organized will help you distinguish yourself and, and stand above everybody else. Because that's something a lot of freelancers aren't. They are not organized. So definitely go ahead and do so. So till tomorrow, it's your time to feast.